You want to safeguard your health, maximize your immune system, grow muscle, and lose fat faster? Rover Immune is not herbs and spices. It's not a proprietary blend. It's patented. It's a one-of-a-kind product. It's backed by science from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Rover is a protein antibody. It's different. It's real science and gets real results. Check us out at Prova.com. Uh, you're fine. <laughs> Welcome back to Iron Rage. I'm Dave Palumbo, joined as always by Lee Priest. And Lee, today we're gonna we're gonna talk about a topic that irks me to no end. I want to run this clip first, and then I and <laughs> then I, I just that, you know I want you to see the clip. And I want you to just respond spontaneously as soon as you see this. I, I the first I, thing that comes I, to I mind. Wanna, I want to tell you what irks me to no end is when I do cardio and I watch you on these videos. Cause I'm OC. Cause I'm OCD. When I see you sitting there and your chair's fucking crooked behind you. Oh, can you straight... I have a crooked spine, that's why. <laughs> there you go, thank you. Thank Is that you. better? That, that, okay, that, thank you. When I'm, when I'm on the treadmill watching you sit like yeah. that, I start walking fucking crooked. So. <laughs> <laughs> My director over there, does, does, he's a little cockeyed, so he doesn't notice it, I think. So. Have, have you ever been to a gym now? We used to go to... Um, What's that? The gym out at Playa del Rey there it used to be. Um, what was the name of that one? The old guy Joe used to run that one too. Um, Not the, was Mar that the Marina gym? Yeah, Mar Marina Athletic Club, whatever. Yeah. Well, remember they used, to have these me they used to have these wooden slats on the roof going on an angle. Yeah, they and were a little. And whenever you went to bench press, the bar's straight. But when you look at the roof, they're like this. So you'd start fucking doing shit like that. It used right. to throw me off. It used yeah. to be like, yeah, but run, run the clip, Dave. Thank you for straightening I'm, your chair thank up. You. Since, since, you're, since you're OCD, you can remind me at the beginning of every show yeah. to, to correct my chair thank position. Thank you. All right. Do your job, Tom. I think it's really because one of my glutes is bigger than the other, so it kind of twists the chair a little bit, you know. Scar tissue. Yeah. All right. Play the clip. Our son. I think that's Boston White was trying to do that when he was like that. That drives me crazy. I see it. I see it way too often in the gym too. People attempting weights that they can't lift. Lee, I mean, what, what, what goes through? I don't even know. I'm afraid to go on the weights that I could actually handle. Who has the audacity to get under a weight that they cannot, they cannot, or they have no business, you know, trying to lift? Well, you know, well, you've got to give him props because look at the outfit he's got and he's fucking, he's prepared for that. He's got the old fucking unitard on there like back in Xanadu fucking Olivia, Olivia Newton, John, let's get physical days. That's like, he had the whole outfit. He was prepared for this, so. And then the guy behind him, like when I used to go super heavy, sometimes mentally, if I just felt someone's hands just slightly on my waist, because sometimes your waist <laughs> might swerve a bit. But that guy, that guy's going in there for the old fucking black men fucking six inches up the ass on moving it to your deep. He's fucking. He's, I feel he's bad for the spotter <laughs> actually, although I never would have spotted because the guy literally drops the weights on the spotter. I mean, the guy. But look. This is this is the new form of training now. What it's called, you know, it used to be supersets, drop sets. So this is a drop set superset. You drop the weight on your partner. You do one squat. You take the negative. You fall, lands on him, and then that cunt bench presses it back up. You grab it. Then you do a shrug. That would have been it. That would have been impressive. We didn't we didn't see the rest of the tape. That's what happened. He then oh. bench pressed it. Then the guy grabbed it and shrugged it. I think the, the I the think the ambulance came after this, Lee. I really I don't think that there was no one was bench pressing <laughs> oh, anything. But, but, but you see it all the time, like I said. It's like that's just way too heavy. Look at you know. I give sometimes because I've seen it happen where, you know, sometimes you will see a guy who is a bit thin like that who is super strong. So yeah. I've seen this one guy once. He had the leg press load up and like he had like, oh, as much as it could take, and then you know the plates stacked on top. Sure. I'm thinking, okay, I'll, I won't say anything yet. I'll just watch him because, you know, like I said, some people are naturally strong and can do this weight, even though they don't have a lot of muscle. So I'm watching, and he's wrapping up. He's psyching up. So I'm just waiting. Look, I, I wasted 10 minutes of my fucking life waiting. <laughs> he, finally, he finally gets in there. He sits down. He puts his legs on the thing. And you know how you got the handles you can turn yeah. out? Yeah. He pushes it up off those little stoppers. Now I think he's going to turn the handles out. No, he just pushed it off the stoppers <laughs> and put it back. I was like, talk about, 
Talk about anticlimactic. That's like fucking trying to come on a big night of coke. Nothing fucking happens. <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> it, it, the workload just to load the plates up is not worth it doing this exactly. for me. You and, know? and then he got up and took it up. That, that, that would have been the hardest part of the exercise, putting the weights on and taking them off. And I was, yeah. all, I was all ready to give this guy credit, and he just lifted off the stopper and went, Dun. and he had leg wraps and everything. This guy, I was just like... Well, at bother. least he was smart enough to know that he probably would have killed himself had he not uh, undone no. the, uh, the... But you the, see the it all the time. It's like someone would be doing benches and they'll just go to here. Or if they're squatting, like they'll just do that little bit like this. Because, you know, as soon as they break parallel or they break that thing, there yeah. ain't no coming back. It's just... Well, I think that's what happened to the guy we just saw in that thing. I think he broke mm -hmm. his legs a little too much and he, he couldn't handle the weight. I mean, that was a lot of weight. I saw it literally. This is a true story. I saw it at Bev's gym once. Some guy... He had to be skinnier than the guy in that video we just watched. He loaded 10 plates on each side of the squat bar. Okay, now, my max I ever did was seven plates on each side, and that's a lot of weight. And I almost got, and I was 320 pounds, and I almost got crushed. I mean, the, the weight, the crushingness of the weight on my, on my spine was unbelievable. And this guy puts 10 plates on each side. I, I ran, was running to the front of the gym to tell Weinberger, because I'm not, I don't know going to tell the guy. To do. <laughs> Steve was already running back as he had a camera and he saw, and he was screaming at this guy. He's like, get out of the fucking gym. He's like, no way you're doing this. Get that weight off of there. You can't do this weight. He's like, he goes, have you ever done this? He goes, no, I was going to try. <laughs> the guy was completely <laughs> delusional. Weinberger, I thought he was going to beat the crap out of the guy, but uh, you know, thank God we stopped the guy from doing it because he, he certainly would have killed himself. And then he would have tried to sue Steve probably for, you know, faulty equipment or something like that, you know? Well, well getting the crap beat out of you by Steve would have been a lot less damaging. Oh, than absolutely. It would have been for. much better. But it, is, it, I think I'm sure I told you the story before. Mike, your blonde old five jacket, who's no jacket now, could yeah. tell you that. Yeah. This guy come to Venice, California when I was training, when Mike and I used to train. And he was one of these up and come, well... In his mind, he was an up-and-comer. He's come out there to be a bodybuilder. Right. I'm going to go meet Joe Weider, blah, blah, blah. So a couple of times we let him train with us, and oh, I was getting double the workout. So one day we're doing, you know, as soon as you come in golds, he used to have that Cybex Smith machine just yeah. to, in front of that mirror. It was yep. a nice a straight up and down one. We are squatting on that one day. We just kept going up, going up, and he was like, can I join in? Sure. We're up to seven plates aside. And I did my set. <laughs> Mick did his, did whatever weight he did. I put my seven back on. I did another set. He goes, oh, can I have a go now? I said, sure. I said, what do you want? He goes, leave it at that. Leave that weight on. I'm like, <laughs> I said, you want that weight? He's like, yep. I looked at Mike and I'm like, okay, sure enough. Gets under it, unracks it. And I'm not lying here. You can ask Mike to collaborate this story. Collaborate, not collaborate, but he got clobbered, this guy. He unracks it. And as soon as he went it go down, boom, like that guy, straight to the floor. And the, and do you think, oh, Mike, your blonde and I helped him? No, nah, we just walked away and left him under it. Did you? <laughs> was he pinned at the floor? I don't know. He so finally got out because he had those little stoppers, but the stoppers uh, were only this high off, but yeah. it did squash him like a fucking accordion. <laughs> and he's like this, thinking, thinking we're going to help him. No, we just walked away. It's like when the coyote, coyote hits that brick wall chasing the road. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we, just, we, we just looked at each other and went, and walked over. Yeah, you know, a couple of days before we should have known better. We did chest with him, and he's a type of guy where you're doing the dumbbells. You know, if you go on in golds, he had the one forties, one sixties. If you get a bit heavy, if you get the six or eight reps and you need a spot, you get a little spot. This guy would get one first rep, so you grab him and you go to give him one more. You're like, okay, that's it. Couple more. So <laughs> he, he's doing this. I'm behind him. I'm getting the best fucking pec deck workout by fucking spotting him like this. Right, right, by the right. Time the, by the time the set's over, it's like I'm supersetting. I'm doing presses and pec deck helping him. <laughs> I just don't get, get in their mind. It's like, I'm sure you've ever spotted the guy that's on bench. This happened to another guy when I was living in Texas. Yeah. Lee, can I get a spot? And I hate spotting people. I'm yeah. just like, oh, okay. He was doing bench. You know, he's getting there. I said, okay, I can see he's starting to struggle. So I put my hand under and just... Just guide him up. Just barely touched it. It came up. Another one. Okay, fuck okay, another one. Down we go. Comes up, and I think, fuck, now I've got to put two hands on it. So I put two <laughs> hands on it. And now I'm starting to do an upright run. I can tell he's finally lost it. So I pulled it right up like this now. I had to use all my strength to pull it up. Yeah. One more. I went, okay. I just let it go, and it went, boom. <laughs> <laughs> And remind me not to ask you to spot me here. <laughs> well, it's like, you got to you got to have common sense. It's like, even if, like, you know, these powerlifters that go for the one rep, even they're smiling that they know that when they get to their limit. Because 
it's like when you get to that limit, like sometimes leg pressure, you can maybe add a plate here and there because you're strong on the legs. But anyone that knows whether you're doing these other types of presses, like if you're putting a plate on and you get to your limit on bench press, yeah. even the smallest two and a half kilo or five kilo sure. each side feels like a ton. It's like shit, you know. I, I used to have a friend that he could bench 300 for a while. And he could never get over 300. He always had that sticking point. Yeah. If I put a two and a half each side mentally, couldn't move it. Couldn't move it. Well, it's not that much heavier. Sure. But after a month or so, we tricked him and told him it was 300 and he benched it. It was like 310. He's <laughs> like, oh, shit, I didn't know. But he has a mental block. But right. that's why I don't get it. If, if that smaller weight can make that much difference, these guys will be struggling on three plate bench and they're like, put another plate on. Yeah. <laughs> you're going they're to crazy. four plates yeah. now. <laughs> it's like, you just struggled. You just struggled with three. Now you're going to jump up another ninety pounds or so. It's like... yeah, I, I don't. I you know I always knew in the gym what I was able to do and what I couldn't do, and I never mm -hmm. ever would risk hurting myself doing something that even though my ego might have said I want to do more because the guy who's training with me is stronger, mm -hmm. I would never go that to that place where I might actually jeopardize hurting myself severely. I, 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 that's why I think there's a lot of crazy people out there because I don't know like who would get under a bar like that guy was. Whether I, I have to imagine it's a real video, but but even if it's not, there's plenty of people out there who do this all the time. Like you said, we've seen it a million times. I don't know what they're thinking in their mind. Do they look in the mirror and say, "Hey, you know what? I'm li I'm lifting more than the than Greg Kovacs is, but yeah, how come I'm like a hundred pounds less muscle than him?" Well, because yeah. maybe you, you, don't, you move the weight three inches, you know? Well, that's like you see, I've seen before where you see these guys like Kai Green, they'll do a certain weight. And then you see a guy like that who, you know, he has, his legs don't have the muscle of Kai Green's forearm. Right. But yet they'll try and put the same weight on that <laughs> Kai Green uses on a leg press. Right. Or the guy, like, the guy that's got legs like that will put 10 plates each side of the leg press to do calves. And his calves are like this. It's like, seriously, you think that you can do this i like i don't get it it's just yeah. i said their ego takes over for sure because there's no way in your mind because when i used to get to my limit i knew that you know what if i put something else on and go more this is coming down on me so you got to sure. be smart about it and i'm sure you had it too where you might have done a certain lift and someone goes what 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 can you do for one what can, i said i don't go for ones i'm not yeah. a power lifter i'm not going to risk getting an injury right, it's right, like exactly you know if i was squatting a certain weight <clears throat> you know six seven plates and you're getting six reps out i'm not going to go hey well it's throw eight and a half on, I'll go for a single because, you know, tsh, you know, tear right. your quad, that's the end of it. When you're moving up in weight too, you, you're <clears throat> going to move up to a weight that you can maybe do three reps for. You know, that you know mm -hmm. you can get the weight, but maybe you just can't do enough to really make it a good working set, but you want to get used to the weight. But at least you know you can do the weight. Um, you know, mm -hmm. and it's, and, and I was, I was, when I was very scared every, I would, you know, not a religious person by nature, but I, I got very <laughs> religious when I got under that much weight because it was very scary, especially when you bench press and when you and when you squat because it's a very vulnerable oh, yeah. position. It's, deadlift is not a big deal. You, either you lift it or you don't lift it. There's no there's no there's no uh, danger in doing that. But when you're squatting or you're benching and you have that weight, you know, kind of hanging over you or you know on top of you. You got to be very focused. Well, I mean, the focus. Well, you, there I could have been that. someone getting shot next to me, and I wouldn't have noticed it because I was so focused on the set. Oh yeah, and that's the thing. When I used to squat, if I had any little pain anywhere else, I couldn't do it because if my mind was somewhere else, mm -hmm. I couldn't do it. If I'm thinking, you know, you got like a little niggling knee pain or a little back pain Bad as idea. you go to as you squat, you're thinking about that pain, and you're like, "Is it going to go? Is it going to yeah, go it now? Goes Is it going to go?" Happens. Yeah. Yeah. So. But yeah, the time, the very first time I did seven plates, even like you said, the way your spine goes, I remember getting it and I got along my back. And as soon as I come out the rack, it's like my spine just went. Yeah, right. And then, and then the bar goes like that. And I did like five, six reps. Every time you come up, the bar goes. Dun, dun. It's, it's a very scary experience. And when I went to put it back, good thing I had to spotter each side because when I went to put it back, I was at least two, three inches shorter just from the weight pushing down on me. I couldn't get it back up. <laughs> You're if right. I, if I was. If I was by myself, I wouldn't have got it back in the room because the bar had bent, so it's not sitting yeah, where the bar was. You can't, anymore, so you can't do those weights yourself. You've got to have a spotter, yeah. And absolutely. even the first time I did that, though, I didn't drop down straight away. It was like I got back in the position, and I probably went a quarter away just to feel it. Yeah. And then the next rep, I went a little bit deeper. Yeah, yeah. It's like I, I, I could never get that mentality. That's where I give these powerlifters all the credit because walking out with all that weight and just dropping on your first one, it's like, I've almost like got to set my mind up. I've got to feel it first. Okay, right. that was okay. I'll go a bit deeper. 
I did take yeah. you about two or three reps before I got parallel to start sure. doing reps. <laughs> but you know what? As a bodybuilder, Lee, and you could attest to this, when you're when you're going down and doing a squat, you're really focused on making sure that the quad muscles and the mm -hmm. hams and glutes are working. It's a mind-muscle connection, whereas when you're a power lifter, your main goal is not to worry if you're working the muscles, it's just to get the weight up. So yeah, but just that, they're just thinking that about something down. different than you are, you know? Yeah, but just that dropping down with some of the weights they use would be... Oh, well, the lowering <laughs> of the weight is ridiculous. But you know what? A lot of those powerlifters, too, wear those, you know, if you, the way they wrap their knees, it's almost like they have a freaking, uh, like a coil on there, like like you would put on a, the brakes of your car, you know? Yeah, I remember I remember my friend, he used to do um, powerlifting, he had one of those powerlifting suits on, and I said, let me try along. He's a bigger guy, I got into yeah. it, and I was like this, and I was almost like... You needed at least two plates on the bar just to push the suit right, down because it had right. that spring in it. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I know when they do records now, I think they have like with suits and without suits because they do give you that bit of assistance. Sure. But oh, yeah. they're walking like this because they can't move because of the powerlifting suit. And yeah. just the bar itself, you can't pull it, go down because it's like so springy in that suit. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I mean, even I said, I used to sometimes wear leg wraps when I went heavy on leg press, but I never put them on super tight. One time I did, I think almost like, I couldn't wait to get them off. It feels like your calves are going to explode because they're cutting in. And <laughs> yeah. That's like, no, yeah. it was more psychological for me more than anything. Even if I had a belt on, I'd wait till I got me my heaviest set before I right. put it on to feel like there's something there just holding my back in a little bit. But yeah, yeah sometimes I get wobbly. Like I said, and my friend would just put his hands there to steady me. And like I said, if you're in your mind, you think someone's there, it's like, okay, that's one less thing I got to think about. All I got to think about is doing the exercise. But you know, I love those, like you said, there's so many out there now of all these silly gym fails of what people are trying to do. And the things I, I was watching one the other day, it came up, I guess, because everyone's in lockdown, people are trying to do stuff. There's one guy at home bench pressing and he's doing the old famous, gets stuck, yeah. tilts the weights off one end, tries to roll the bar down. <laughs> and this, the funny thing that gets me is, though, you're the dickhead at home filming this by yourself. Why put the fucking thing online? I can go do another set and do it properly, but yeah, because people want to get any hits. They don't even care. It could be negative attention. Yeah. They could be. There was a guy I saw do something completely insane, and, and he put it online, and I knew it was because he wanted to get hits. But he looked ridiculous doing it. But <laughs> people don't care. They they, they want to act like clowns just to get uh, any kind of acknowledgement. You know. I've seen a few lately too where they're doing the big heavy deadlift and they're like, mm -hmm, pull up, pull up. <laughs> they finally get it up and then they drop it, then they fucking pass out. <laughs> it's like, the the best stuff is the treadmill. You ever see these people walking oh, on the treadmill and then they get thrown off the treadmill? Those are the funniest oh, yeah. of all time, you know. Generally, sometimes it's the women, they're on their phone looking, they're all sort of tripped. <laughs> just the look on their face and the people stand beside them like, no one goes to help, no one goes to help them, they just go, yeah, because they don't want to stop their workout, right? God forbid yeah, the person hurt, you know, hurt themselves or something like that. Oh, the funny ones I saw too lately, the ones that try and jump up onto those boxes and they miss and they fucking just topple over the box. Uh, and Every time I watch one of those, I'm a nervous wreck before watching it because I know that it, 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 I can just see myself getting severely hurt doing that. I don't know what the purpose of people jumping on boxes is, but it's not smart. I tell my kids all the time, don't jump up on boxes. You're going to slip and fall and hit your head. And... Maybe for some sport, maybe if you're doing high jump or long jump, if you're practicing for that explosive yeah, but those guys jump. don't fall. You get a high jumper, he'll jump up in the box. He's not falling on the ground. I guarantee yeah. you. It's the people that are, I don't know, they think that they're <laughs> going to do a bikini contest. They got to jump up on a fucking box. They're going to get better glutes because of it, which we know is not going to yeah. happen. Those are the people that are well, falling on their head. Don't even get started on that now. So many, when I was before the gym shut, all these new glute exercises coming plyos, out and then... Plyos, plyos, right? Uh, uh, <laughs> it's like, whatever happened to just basic squatting and lunges and I don't, I don't know. leg press? And, but now they've got that whole... Even when I was at the expo in England at the Body Power, have you seen that whole booty leg press machine they've got now? Like, nah. It's called the Booty Blaster. <laughs> no. It's actually a leg press. It looks like a smaller version of a leg press, yeah. but it's made just for your booty. Really? I'm like... What maybe the they should. Is... Maybe we should open a chain of gyms that are like called booty gyms or something like that. And there's only but sure... there's only glute uh, exercises there. The whole gym. You, Blackman you would sign it... up there only if they had uh, men that were uh, exercising. Men, men only. If it was men only, he'd sign up. He'd be like the inspector. He <laughs> <laughs> come be coming. I'll, desi and... I'll design the, the men's <laughs> program. Don't worry about Let it. Let me. Yeah. Let me just feel. I got to do before and after. Ty's got some very innovative techniques. You yes. know, for glutes. I got a new technique today. Here you go. Just put that in there and squeeze. Hold it tight. 
I want 10 reps while you hold my finger. <laughs> we'll build up next week to this. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, but I just, it would, you would actually make a fortune if you just had, I'm sure, I think even Romano said it once, if, I think he did say he had like a section of his gym where it was just dedicated to glutes yeah. and hammies and glutes, and that's the busiest section because <laughs> I see the girls do and Then you see that I'm surprised the girl hasn't been injured yet, but you know where they do those hip thrust things? Oh, and they my put all God. The weight? Yeah, it's so silly. Yeah, so silly. I've seen girls with almost five, six plates across their waist here, and they're doing these pelvic thrusts like this. But then if you go to fuck them, they're, they're too lazy to give you a little bit of a fucking <laughs> ugh, like that. They'll be... <laughs> they'll be pumping. They'll be. They'll be pumping five plates into the air to work their fucking glutes. But if you want to give them a bit of a dick down, you want a slight bit of movement. They're like a fucking starfish. <laughs> oh. So my advice is, if you want to bang a girl, bang her at the gym while she's doing the hip thrust. It's the only time you'll get some fucking stimulation. Fucking hell! It's all about them. It's all about them. I tell you. Let me tell you. <sighs> Oh, Lee, you're the greatest. I love you, man. And they build it nice glutes. <laughs> they, uh, what I don't up, understand is they, I always tell they... people, look, if you don't squat, if you want big glutes, which seems to be in nowadays with the wellness division, all the South American <laughs> and in Central America, they all like the, the big butts. Squat. That's all you got to do uh -huh. is squat. If you squat, you're going to get a big butt. You're going to get a big muscular uh -huh. butt. There's nothing better than a free weight squat for developing glutes. Would you agree with that? Exactly. And then they build these nice, beautiful glutes and nice asses. And heaven forbid you want to fuck it. No, no, no. That's like having a Lamb that's like having a Lamborghini. No, you can't fucking drive it. Just look at it. What the fuck? It's air, isn't it? Use it. That's a... That's an outer, not an innie. Well, oh, you know what? You don't, you don't complain. You don't complain when I lick in your pussy right near your piss hole. Do I complain about that? No. It's like you know you got. We to almost got monetized to that. I don't know. We we were close to it, Tyler. <laughs> and then we almost had a monetization Dave, for this show. Look, look. I don't know who monetizes these things, but this is fucking educational. I'm telling you, this is educational. <laughs> okay, I might not use the proper words like vagina and stuff. I go a bit. You're but you're but, you Aussie, know, still, so you're all, you're excused. Yeah. It's, it's still educational what yeah. I'm saying. So, and it's true. It's like, look at my booty. Look at my booty. I don't touch it. It's like you know. They'd be like, hey, Dave, look at my Lamborghini. You want to go for a drive? No, you're not going to go for a drive. <laughs> I'll take everybody else for a drive but you. All my exes have banged me in the ass and it hurt, but I'm not going to let you bang me in the ass. Because <laughs> I love you. I love you so much. You're the love of my life. But you can't, you can't bang me in the ass. My ex had beat me up. He could because he was just rough like that. <laughs> but, <you know. laughs> <laughs> he brought me he brought me these boobs so just enjoy them my ex brought me these boobs so just enjoy them <laughs> it's like what the fuck is going on with women oh, poor Lee that's crazy yeah poor Lee poor well, me I know it's the moral of the story is don't lift I don't know what it is or what is it don't <laughs> don't lift what you can't lift you know the, you, know, you know what? The, I think the, the really the moral story is Lee. The people are out of their fucking minds, and you know they're so <laughs> delusional about the way they see themselves in the world, and that's why they don't make progress because they're delusional as to what they're doing. In other words, rather than say, you know what, I don't have a lot of muscle, I have to start from square one and build to square ten. They think that because Lee's at square ten, I'm going to go right to ten. And that's and why there's injuries forgot, in the gym, and that's why people get hurt. And you know what? It, it, we make it fun forgot, of the whole thing, forgot, but, it, but it's, it's, it's a serious, it really is a serious problem, you know. You forgot the main thing too, though, Dave. They might have been at the gym the week before squatting one plate, but you forgot the key ingredient. Right. They went home and took a couple of thousand milligrams of tests. So next week they can go to eight plates because right. I'm on the gear now, and, and, mate. And four, energy drink, and four pre-workouts <laughs> and energy drinks before they got to the gym. That no, was the problem. No, I'm, on, I'm on gear now, mate. I might have started at one plate last week, but now I'm on the source. <laughs> I can go fucking heavy. So the moral of the story is don't go heavy and don't ask your missus for anal sex because you're not going to get it because that's an Audi. That's an Audi, not an innie. Well, that's you know right. what? And on that very wise yeah. note from Lee Priest, uh, we will call it quits like for today. It's like, when, it's, like, it's, like, it's like when you got the period and I don't want to have... No. It's like, look, I got my period, we can't have sex. All right, we'll suck my dick. 
Oh, oh no! What? What? Your fucking gums bleeding too? You can't suck my dick. It's like, <laughs> always an excuse, Dave. Always an excuse. But they got like headache, period, this and that. The second you say you don't feel like it, oh, what? You don't love me anymore? You're cheating on me? You seen someone else? No, no, I'm not. Oh, fucking hell. I got hemorrhoids. My ass is bleeding. Leave me alone, Blackman. Come, come back next week. <laughs> oh.